Hi and good day everyone. Chapter 3 Homeostasis Role of ADH and Aldosterone Combination of nervous and hormonal controls manage the osmoregulatory function of the mammalian kidney. The two key, key important hormones for this chapter are ADH and aldosterone in the renin angiotensin aldosterone system or referred as RAAS. Role of ADH Osmoreceptor cells in the hypothalamus will monitor the osmolarity of the blood and it will regulate the release of ADH from the posterior pituitary gland. ADH will make the epithelium of the collecting duct to be more permeable to the water. Alright, so it influences the water uptake by increasing the amount of aquaporin in the plasma membrane of the cell. So this will cause the water reabsor reabsorption to increase. So this is the normal blood osmolarity at 300 milliosmol per liter. If there is an increment in the blood osmolarity, uh, such as after sweating profusely, it will cause the osmoreceptor in hypothalamus to trigger the release of ADH by the posterior pituitary. So the increment of the ADH will signal the collecting duct to increase the water reabsorption. So this will cause um, uh, them to produce uh, concentrated urine. And then it will reduce the urine volume. And at the same time, it will lower the blood osmolarity. All right. So um, this will also cause uh, hypothalamus will generate the thirst. So we will feel thirsty and we will stand to drink more water. So this action will cause the uh, blood osmolarity to be back to normal. However, if the blood osmolarity decreases, blood osmolarity decreases, it will cause the ADH to drop. So when ADH drops, it will cause the water reabsorption to decrease. All right. And then this will increase the discharge uh, urine. That means we are going to produce huge amount of diluted urine. This diagram shows the ADH response pathway in the collecting duct. Right. So this is what happened in the collecting duct when ADH level increases due to the increase of the blood osmolarity. So this uh, increment of ADH will cause ADH to bind to the membrane receptor. So you can see how ADH bind to the receptor. So binding of the ADH to the receptor will cause the activation of the cyclic AMP which act as a second messenger. So activation of this second messenger will cause the activation of the protein kinase A. So this one actually uh, three, triggers the signal's transduction. So activation of protein kinase A will then cause the vesicles with aquaparins, this one, the, the purple color, all right? Uh, it causes the vesicle with aquaparin water channels inserted into this membrane. So you can see how this vesicle is then fused with the membrane, all right, and then causing the aquaporin to be on the membrane of the collecting duct, all right, to the membrane of the lining lumen of collecting duct, all right. So these aquaporin channels will then enhance the water reabsorption from the lumen of the collecting duct to this uh, interstitial fluid. All right. So this will cause the blood osmolarity to return back to normal. So from this diagram, we can see how from normal water potential of blood, when there is an uh, decrement 
that means b blood become too salty it it will cause the uh, osmoreceptor in the hypothalamus to uh, signals pituitary gland to release ADH all right so ADH will then cause the uh, permeability of this still tubule to increase and the collecting duct to to increase its permeability this causing the water to be reabsorbed into the blood vessels all right so at the end it will produce small volume of hypotonic urine and then the normal water potential of blood um, is written okay however if the water potential of blood increases that means blood become too watery uh, the same thing happened it will be detected by the osmoreceptor and then causing the pituitary to release less adh so this adh uh, will cause uh, less adh will cause this tubule and collecting duct to be remain impermeable at the end it will cause large volume of diluted urine uh, to be excreted out then it causes the normal water potential of blood to to return to normal all right role of aldosterone so aldosterone will act on the nephron distal tubule and collecting duct so mechanism of renin angiotensin aldosterone pathway will increase the sodium reabsorption this diagram shows the mechanism of RAAS. If the blood pressure or the blood volume drops from the normal blood pressure and volume, uh, for example, due to the dehydration or the blood loss, the sensors in the GGA will detect the decrease. So this will cause the GGA to release enzyme called renin. So this renin will then cleave angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. So with the help of ACE, angiotensin 1 is then converted to angiotensin 2. So angiotensin 2 will cause the atrials to constrict. So when atrials constrict, it will decrease the blood flow to capillaries in the kidney to raise the blood pressure. At the same time, it will stimulate the adrenal gland to release aldosterone. So aldosterone will make the distal tubule and collecting duct to reabsorb more water and sodium to increase the blood volume and pressure so this will return uh, the blood pressure and volume to normal coordination of edh and raes so both are partners in homeostasis when increased water reabsorption in the kidney but the release of ADH is a response to an increase in the blood osmolarity when the body is dehydrated. However, the release of aldosterone is due to the excessive loss of both salt and also body fluid due to a major wound or severe diarrhea that able to reduce the blood volume without increasing its osmolarity. So there, there is a, a bit of difference between these two hormones so ADH alone will lower the blood sodium concentration via water reabsorption in the kidney but the RAAS helps to maintain the body fluid osmolarity at the set point by stimulating the sodium reabsorption three point three positive feedback mechanism so positive feedback loops uh, occur in animals but do not usually contribute to homeostasis. All right? Any deviation or disturbance from the normal set point will lead to further increase in the deviation. So if let's say there is an increment in something, it will cause it to increase more. It is usually harmful but in certain, certain circumstances, it becomes useful. All right? As example, during labor, hormone oxytocin is produced in order to stimulate the contraction of the uterus muscle so this will cause or in turn will stimulate the release of more oxytocin so when there is more oxytocin produced it will cause the the uh, uterus muscle to contract more so it helps uh, for the labor process so also oxytocin also induce the release of milk all right so suckling uh, as a stimulus it will send a message to the hypothalamus via the nervous system to release oxytocin which further stimulate the milk glands and then it will help to produce more milk all right then the third one is the process of 
blood clotting. Alright, this diagram shows the positive feedback mechanism during childbirth. Alright, stimulus uh, is when uh, fetus is pushed against the uterine opening. Alright, sensor, which is the receptor in the in inferior of the uterus, will detect the increased stretch. Alright, and then it will be sent to the integrating center, so the brain will receive the stretch information from the uterus, and then it will compare it with the set point. Alright, and then after that, effector will uh, take action. So if it is above set point, pituitary gland then is stimulated to increase the uh, secretion of the oxytocin. So when the oxytocin increases, it will cause the increase in the uterine contraction. All right. So positive feedback loop is completed. So result in the increased force against uh, the cervix. All right. This will promote the birth of the baby. So the increased uh, contraction helps uh, during the labor process. So this is another example of positive feedback mechanism, which is the release of milk. So in this uh, example, uh, stimulus is the sucking by the baby. It will then um, stimulate the hypothalamus. Uh, and then it will cause the posterior pituitary gland to secrete the oxytocin. So oxytocin is secreted into the blood vessels. Then the oxytocin um, will move to the target cell, which is the smooth muscle in breast via blood. blood. So then the target cells uh, will cause the production of the milk and the release of the milk. So that is the example of positive feedback mechanism. So that's the end of chapter 3, homeostasis. Thank you for listening.